Shabbat Shalom. We mention often that interpreting one word differently in the Torah or seeing one word that we don't think should be there in the Torah or that we are not sure why it's there in the Torah can change the entire meaning of an entire story. I often refer to, uh, to this book, especially when guests are here, uh, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves, uh, The Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation, as I uh, share with visitors that the Torah has no punctuation, and so we have had to invent where the punctuation goes. This week we're reading the story of Jacob's dream of the angels going up and down the ladder, and later uh, in our service, Cantor Kathy will chant uh, the verses that immediately follow that dream. There is a word that can change, pivot the whole concept of what this story is about. Jacob dreams of angels in the ladder. He wakes up and he's in awe. He can't believe what he's just dreamed. It's as if it was real. And in fact, we don't know. Perhaps it was real as he believed. And he says these famous words, Surely God is present in this place, and I, I did not know it. So often, I is repeated. I, I did not know it, because in fact, the word I appears twice in the sentence in Hebrew. Anochi lo yadati. I did not know it. He then sets up a stone and calls this place Bethel, the house of God. When we read the story this way, we think of the places where we've been blind to what is sacred before us. Places where God was perhaps right there, some would say, and we didn't know it. Where we've seen something or someone maybe a thousand times before, and then suddenly we see that thing or that person differently. Over these days when we've had so much time at home, uh, in my family, we've been sharing the movie Back to the Future with our children. And one of the many repeated themes is how Marty McFly's parents, Lorraine and George, Lorraine sees George as this nerdy guy time and time again. There's no way she would ever go on a date with him. And then all of a sudden, in this one moment, she falls in love. She sees him differently. Or it's like friends of mine who go scuba diving have told me. You look out at the water and you think there's nothing there and then you jump beneath the surface and there's a whole world, a universe. When we read the story the traditional way, we talk about our weakness where we can't see things, where we are blind to things that are right in front of us. But there's a different way to read the story. Jacob dreamt of the angels in the ladder. He wakes up in awe. Surely God is present in this place, and I, God, I, God, did not know it. It is God, they say, who could be the second I. That God was unaware of what this place was and how special it could be. God jumps in and declares that God has curiosity that God doesn't know everything, and that, in fact, we as human beings, we can make God aware of what is sacred and beautiful and awesome in our world. And then Jacob sets up a stone and says this, this God is where your house should be. The difference, it doesn't acknowledge our weakness. It acknowledges one of our strengths, one of our very human strengths, that we have the ability to transform spaces to take a place that is mundane and with our vision and work of our hands to make it an awe-inspiring place. I think about places I've been that I thought were mundane, but later they took my breath away. I think, especially this week, of college campuses, of the place where I went to college in Oxford, Ohio. Who would think Oxford, Ohio could be beautiful? or Bloomington, Indiana, where my sister went to school. A wonderfully beautiful campus in a beautiful part of the country that if you were to look on a map, you would never pick it out to be a place to visit. Or that time you walked into a stadium 
a stale, huge building. And then you walk in through the gates to hear the crowds. Sometimes not such a different feeling when we walk into our sanctuaries. You walk into these spaces not knowing how large they are, and you, you enter inside. And even the most mundane of spaces, sometimes I've been to Shabbat services in gymnasiums, are made to be awe-inspiring because of how many people are singing in unison and praying. How many times have we been to a dilapidated building because we were going to serve at a food pantry or a clothing closet only to be in awe of the space that we were in and to know that it was in fact sacred? And most recently, in these past weeks and months, our homes, they have become sanctuaries, places that we have made sacred. Writer Ganilla Norris, author of Being Home, a book of prayers for everything from folding the laundry to doing the dishes, wrote the following, and I think these last weeks, especially this week of Thanksgiving, it could not be more true. Our homes can become sacred places, filled with life and meaning. We do not need cathedrals to remind ourselves to experience the sacred. Tomorrow I will begin my Shabbat morning with Torah study from my house here in Akron. At 11 a.m., I will be with my family in Chicago as we celebrate the bat mitzvah of my cousin virtually. At 2 p.m., I will be in Boston as one of my dearest friends gives a Hebrew name to his firstborn child. Look at how easily we have made our homes into our sanctuaries, how beautiful it has become for those who've watched weddings and bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and namings, or even just connected with people through our homes over this Thanksgiving as we ate dinner together, even if we were on different coasts. Are we not living in a world where God is looking down upon us in awe? where our homes have become such obvious sanctuaries, not just because they offer their protection and their safety during a pandemic, but because we are increasingly bringing our blessings into the spaces we designed with our own hands. There are times when the sacred is invisible to us, where we read the story of Jacob and we ask ourselves, what have I missed? What have I been blind to that is beautiful? And in those times, we are surprised when our eyes are opened to what we could have seen all along, and we see our weakness. And then there are times when we open God's eyes, when we declare that a, pa a place is sacred because of what we do there, what we dream there, who we bless there, and how we love others there. This year, Va'anuchi lo yadati, I did not know, is not our voice alone, but the voice of God, in awe of what we can create from the very comfort of our own homes. Shabbat Shalom. Turn to